Father, I pray for every person that is here tonight. God, I pray that you prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, Lord, for your word. Lord, I pray for revelation, God, from you, Lord. Lord, come and reveal yourself to each and every one of us. Give us new revelation. Open your word to us as individuals, God. I pray that the word will become uh, alive and active in each and every one of us. Lord, I pray for all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit to be alive and active. God, thank you for, for the prophetic word of wisdom, knowledge, prophecy, healing, all nine gifts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Um, so my name is Andre Bronkhorst. I am originally Afrikaans. Um, from Pretoria originally and moved to George two years ago. We have a, we, as a family, we have a farm between uh, George and Mossel Bay. We stay there. Um, God has sent us there to establish a ministry and a couple of things later, later on in the next couple of years. But we uh, use that as a place to rest now. Um, I minister, I'm ministering extensively overseas in different countries at the moment. So when we are in South Africa or home, we just rest. We don't do anything. So um, I just spoke to a pastor friend of mine in, in uh, Oetschwerang. So he, he, he heard I'm uh, back on Monday. So he said, are you preaching on Sunday? So I said, yes, we'll preach for you. <laughs> um, but it's a place for us to just uh, spend some time with my family and uh, just connect with them for now. Um, I've been uh, overseas up until um, April this year and uh, we've been resting and then I'm leaving in uh, three weeks from now, leaving and uh, I'll be on the road from August till December. Uh, we'll be back in December just for a little while then we're going to be for Singapore. So uh, different countries, Dubai, Canada, um, US for six weeks and Germany and Switzerland. There's a, a really a revival happening all over the world at this moment, not just in a certain country, all over the world. God's was doing great things. Any church, any place where people are crying out to God, there's a revival. Um, there is extraordinary things happening in Germany at the moment, uh, in Europe. Um, there's really the church in Europe is alive and active. So many things is, that's happening there. I'm going back to Europe and I'm, uh, uh, I'll be preaching. Most of the churches that I'll be preaching in is Catholic churches. And I'm training them in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, preaching about the Holy Spirit in those churches. So it's amazing how people are hungry for God. They want Him. And uh, I've just, uh, we had dinner, uh, lunch dinner with Pastor Paul and his wife, and it's amazing how people are becoming hungry for God, and they don't have time for gimmicks and things anymore. You know, it's time for the church to grow. Uh, people have to turn back to the power of God. They have to pray, they have to start to pray for sick people again. They have to prophesy, they have to function the gifts. Church cannot be just doctrine every Sunday. They have to allow the Holy Spirit to work and, and function. Um, so we're praying for that, and even our nation, that God will start to work more uh, in churches. But it's, the, it's our responsibility, and it's the pastor's and leadership's responsibility to allow the Holy Spirit to work, uh, to give Him that opportunity to start to pray for sick people again. That's, um, people are not going to come to church to, for doctrine. They, they want to see the power of God. They want to experience God, and it's time for that. Um, I've been called to restore the prophetic, so major, the major uh, work of things that I do at this moment all over the world is to train and equip in the prophetic and to restore it. I said to Pastor Paul that many of the churches that I go to, charismatic churches uh, in the States, they do not allow me to prophesy in uh, because of things that prophets have done, uh, things that they've said and have done to the body of Christ. So therefore, the purpose is to restore the prophetic. I do not minister prophetically outside the church anymore. In Acts, read it to you, people don't believe me. Acts 1, um, Acts 13 verse 1, he says, Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers in the church. And it's time for the prophetic to come back to the church, um, back to the body. It's there for the body of Christ. The prophetic is not for sinners. It's to build the body, to so encourage each, each other. Uh, and we have to bring it back. I stay in, in George now, so close to us is Nysna. And in Nysna, if you drive down to Nysna, there's a, and you go to the waterfront, there's a, a shop there where you pay a couple of hundred and then you get a palm reading. 
Um, and there's, you know, when visitors come, there's lines and lines of people that stand in that queue to get a reading. And uh, now, if people can stand in that line to get a reading, they can come to church to get a word. They can come to church to get prayed for. They have to, we have to bring it back to the family, back to the church itself. So I minister only within the local church and I'm here to support. I don't have a ministry, I don't have a name, I don't have something that I'm here to create or establish. I'm here to support this ministry that God has placed there. I'm here to support Pastor Paul and the vision and mission that God gave him for this area and that's it. Um, it's sad that how many prophets goes into churches and when they leave, people leave with them. That's unhealthy. It's not biblical. It's not the way uh, of God. But there's so many fakes and flaky things out there. There's so many false prophets. And I want to explain to you the reason why we have false prophets the way you see it tonight. The reason why we have false prophets is because there's some real ones. The enemy only copies originals. And we have some great prophets in these days that it's arising. Um, my own spiritual father, someone you may know very well, Prophet Ed Trout. He is my spiritual father. He lives in Texas, San Antonio. And um, he's someone that has pioneered the prophetic all over the world. And God really used him. He had to pay a very expensive price for the prophetic. And um, so we have great prophets that is, that's all over the world. But when it comes to South Africa, I want to share something with you. That South Africa itself has produced some of the greatest men and women of God. South Africa. Greatest men and women of God. All over the world I meet people that's, that originally came from South Africa. From this country. So, so this land is, <laughs> is ripe with, with good fruits and good giftings. It's here. But it needs to be developed. And it's sad because people have a lot of ideas, false ideas and doctrines. I just came from Bulawayo, from uh, Zimbabwe. I trained uh, at a church there uh, in uh, some prophets and that big church. And they've got a lot of prophets in, in Bulawayo and Zimbabwe. But people are just not trained. They're just not equipped. People have great giftings. And I said to the group last night, I said, I am very careful to say that someone is a false prophet. In fact, I don't believe in false prophets. I believe in prophets that's, that's not trained and mature. They are gifted. And that's the reason to be a false prophet means that you have the prophetic in your life. There's, there's a gifting in you. It's already there. But they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to operate. Their, their leaders and people that have run before them haven't taught them um, what the purpose is of the prophetic. And therefore, they have the gifting, but they're using it in the wrong way. And that's the same when it comes to healing. Same to all other giftings. People have the gifting and we read that the gifting is irrevocable. So when God has given you the gifting, it's, it's there, it's in your life. But you can still use it in the wrong way. And therefore, the difference between the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the prophetic, like I teach last night, is um, uh, one flows out of, out of the gifting and one out of the office. Um, I did not apply or study or do something to do to be a prophet. I didn't do that. It's not something that I wanted to do or applied for or, or, or was elected or anything like that. It's something that God has called me to do. So it's not something, it's, it's something that God stirs in your heart that He calls you to do. And with that, God will create the platform and He will open the doors and close the doors as He like. The reason why a lot of people call themselves prophets today is because they are not. <laughs> if, you're a prof, if you're a prophet, you don't have to call yourself a prophet. Okay, it's the I, I, I shared last night that um, ministry does not flow from gifting but from a relationship. So if you have something, the fruit will be there of that. You know, if you really have a healing ministry, you don't have to proclaim that or put up a signboard to say, "Hey, I am, a, I am." A, the sick will get healed when they get close to you. There will be fruit of God's work and God's gifting in your life because of that. So we have a lot of people that, that are so focused on titles today. Um, we have more prophets that has walked the earth ever. And, uh, and it's not a bad thing. It's amazing and people are gifted and they, the God's raising up great and mighty men and women. Apostles, suddenly we have a move of apostles. I just saw a lot of people's titles changed. Um, <laughs> there's certain steps that you go through. Um, but then eventually it's first doctor, but anyway, then you, you get to apostle. Um, 
and it's amazing. It's part of the fivefold ministry, but it's not about the titles. It's not about those things. There's a purpose for the fivefold ministry, and the purpose for that is Christ. To attain the full measure of Christ. That's the purpose of that. It's not to build a ministry. Jesus came to establish a kingdom, not a ministry. And if you start to focus on this kingdom and your, real, your heart is really to build this kingdom, and that's your desire, then God will expand you. He'll build your kingdom and God will expand your territory. He will create the platforms in your life. It's, it's so important for us to have the right motive and keep our hearts clear in that sense. I want to share a couple of things and we'll look at a, at a couple of practical things, depends on where you are. Um, I assume that you are all aware of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and this is not all completely new to you. You have some, some ideas. Could we, did we get a board or not, Amanda? Amanda? No, we didn't get a board. Why not? Sorry. No problem. We'll, uh, I'll try to explain it. Uh, so I want to give you a couple of practical things and then we'll move on um, through tonight and tomorrow so basically tonight and tomorrow is one session so you have to connect the two to each other some of the things that we don't have time to deal with tonight will just go on um, in tomorrow morning so I want to encourage you if it's possible to be here tomorrow morning so we can move from there okay so Acts chapter 2 verse 17 it says in the last day God says I will pour out my spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams now, this is a clear way how you can discern whether you are young or old. Okay. <laughs> Dreams and visions. So he says, your young men will see visions. So if you see visions, it means you're young. Old men will dream dreams. So if you have dreams, sorry, you're old. If you have both, you are in a midlife crisis. So, <laughs> a bit of both. There's different flows of God's voice. And when it comes to the prophetic, the first step for the prophetic is to hear God's voice on your own. I, I meet a lot of people who can prophesy, but they can't hear God's voice for themselves. Really, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. How, how does it work? I have a guy that I uh, just counseled, and he is amazing. He prays for the sick, they get healed, and he prophesies, but his own life is a mess. Falls apart, and uh, there are horrible things happening in his life, and so he's phoning me and saying, please, hear what God, do you have a word for me? What's happening? How come you can hear God's voice for other people, but you can't hear it for yourself? So the first position, and this, way, this is where I want to start tonight, before we get to the prophetic, is hearing God's voice in your own life. Matthew 4 verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The, the picture or the interpretation there of the scripture is a, is a tap that you open, and it starts to flow, and it's a continuous flow. The voice of God is not a voice that speaks once a year. It's a voice that con continually speaks into our lives. He compares it and he says, a man shall not live bread alone, but every word. So he compares it with something that we know, food. Each and every one of us know that we need to eat. So we need three times, three meals a day, or some people eat more. But if you don't eat for a week, eventually your body says to yourself, that, listen, I lack something, I need something. Um, I'm, I get very, very busy and sometimes I skip two or three meals, but then eventually my body says to me, I need to eat. I realize it. So he compares it, f physical food, with his voice. And in a sense, what he's saying, he's saying if you eat three times a day, you should get into a habit of hearing God's voice continuously or regularly in your life. The challenge with that is we live living in a very fast-paced life. Everything is fast. In America, everything is moving faster and faster and faster, and we have microwaves and takeaways, and everything is, is moving at such a pace. And when it comes to God, we want Him to move at the same pace. And God doesn't do that. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't really care, you know, how fast or busy your life is. If you want to hear from, the, from God, you have to move those things aside and set out time for Him. People try, and, you know, recently the Lord spoke to me about prayer. I'm not saying this as a rule or as a standard. But recently, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Andre, um, I've been giving a tenth. Uh, um, I've been giving uh, um, a t my tithe frequently for years and years and years and years. And lately, the Lord has spoken to me about something personally. It's not a word for anyone here. It's, it's a word for me. God spoke to me and said, Andre, I, uh, the tithe thing, um, I don't want the tithe anymore in your life in the form of money. 
I said, great God, wow, thanks, I'm getting a discount, awesome. <laughs> and God said to me, what I want is I want, your, I want a tithe in, in your tithe, 10% of every day of your life um, in prayer. So I said, okay, that's a bargain, that's easy. And then I realized each day is 24 hours, and if I have to give a tithe of that, it's 2 hours and 40 minutes in prayer. There's no space in my, in my diary to do that. It's impossible. And I can, you know, I can do it half an hour a day. But two, two, hour and f two hours, almost three hours to set that time out in prayer right now, it's, it's, you know, it's not easy. I'm going to have to make a lot of changes right now in my life to be able to, to do that. Other people can maybe, but in my life right now, it's not easy to, to, to have two hours and 40 minutes in prayer a day. Every day, it's just, just challenging. So we're living in a fast-paced life, and even in our devotion time, in our prayer and, and things like that, we've, we've shrinked it into our diary. So we have 10 minutes every morning that we pray, or five minutes before you go to bed, we quickly have a prayer, or five minutes here and that. And what we're basically saying to God is, Lord, I've got five minutes, speak quickly. That's it. If you want to share something with me, Quickly, I'm going to have to do it because I need to go. And this is what, what we really do. And let me try to explain it this way. I'm driving with my wife in the car on my way to George. And in the car, my wife says to me, Andre, um, we need to spend some time together. So I say to her, you know, it's, it's an eight-hour drive. Let's do it now. <laughs> Let's spend time. Um, she says, no, 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 we need to spend time together. So I, so I look in the car. There's no one else in the car. I said to her, this is a perfect opportunity. It's eight hours. Whatever you want to talk about, let's do that. You know, there's nothing. What she's talking about is quality time. It's a different kind of time where she has my attention, my phone is off, she really has my time. This is the quality, this is the type of time that I'm talking with in our devotion or in our time with God. Each and every one of us, you know, even Jesus, the Son of God, had to set time out in his life to pray. He's the Son of God. He's got a direct connection with the Father. But every now and then you find Him in a, in a desert place or a deserted place where He's busy praying and asking God, Lord, what do you want? What is your will? Where do I go from here? Constantly still in prayer or connecting with God in some. And I want to encourage you through this to set out time. Church is great, but it does not replace quality time with God. It's not, it's not a replacement for that. As a pastor or as a minister, preparing for a message is not spending time with God. It's not a substitute to that. We have to set our time where we focus on God. So I have, we don't have time um, to, sh to go into these things, but I'm not talking about whatever is possible for you. I'm not saying pray every morning from, from 6 to 7. Um, don't make it a law. Make it a relationship. Don't try to, to create some law that you, that you can't fulfill. Do whatever you can, but start, continue to, to make God part of your life and where you are and to constantly get into a habit of hearing Him. I want to explain to you something. When I started, let me say this. If you wait upon God for 10 minutes a week, 10 minutes a week for six months, your life will completely be transformed. Completely. 10 minutes a week. If I say wait, wait is not to pray. It's not doing something. Wait is wait. The scripture says, blessed is the one who waits upon the Lord. Just waiting. You know, we, we know how to pray. We, we know how to draw God's presence. We know how to worship. But when He shows up, we have no clue what to do. Because we've been trained to, to, uh, to call God's presence. We've been trained to, to attract, to be receptive to Him. But when the glory shows up, we have no idea what to do in the glory. You know, we haven't been trained how to you know, function or operate within the glory at that moment. Then we want to run around and we don't know what to do. You know, we haven't. We, the focus was never on what happens when God shows up. The focus was to get God there. <laughs> so I'm talking about the moments where, where God shows up and, and starts to work. And why I'm saying the reason why I'm saying if you wait upon God for ten minutes. Uh, a week for six months. It's a lifestyle. It's not a quick fix. It's not a button that you press and you get certain results. It's a relationship. It's a walk with God. 
If you constantly start to make God part of your life and invite Him into different areas, then relationship starts to develop and His voice, his voice starts to develop deeper and louder and clearer in your life. It's a lifestyle. It's, to, it's a life with God. It's not, not a Sunday thing. It's something that we do every day that is part of. You know, invite Him into things that you're doing. Ask Him to be part of that and see what will happen. I remember the first time when I started to wait upon the Lord. I was praying for six months for a certain situation, um, praying, you know, all the right verses and, and the way that I've been taught um, with faith and uh, confirmations and all the right things. And I'm praying for six months for a breakthrough in this area. And after six months, one morning I'm praying. And when I got up, God spoke to me and said, Andre, you are impolite. And I said, God, what, sorry, what does it, what does it mean? And the Lord said to me, Andre, for six months you've been praying and asking me for the situation, but you haven't given me opportunity to answer you. For six months you're speaking. And then I realized that God wants to speak to me, wants to answer you. But people don't give him the opportunity. So I've developed in my prayer life, I've developed a way where I do pray, but after that I wait upon God. So I do pray, I ask God, and... But then I wait for five or ten minutes. I wait upon God. Say, Lord, speak to me. I shared last night, last night on our five physical senses. In the same sense, we have five spiritual senses. And we can develop those spiritual um, senses that we have. We can develop it through prayer, through fasting, through it, different individuals functions differently. But we can develop that. And, and we start to become receptive in the spirit in those senses when we do it. But it doesn't mean because I don't hear God that He's not talking. It doesn't mean because I'm not aware of Him right now He's not here. It doesn't mean because my five senses can, can pick Him up. He's not here right now functioning. He's here. God is omnipresent. He is wherever we are. He is here because you're here. He's here right now. And we have to start to look beyond our five senses. We have to start to look beyond what we feel, see and experience. So in waiting up on God, one morning I, was, I started to develop this where I would, um, I'll give you, I'll tell you the truth and I'll share with you my testimony what, what happened. I, um, in, I'm in relationship with God. I've, I've, I'm walking with God and then I read this book about prayer and how this man would climb this mountain and and go up and stay there for three days and cry out to God and, and yeah, he would have this great spiritual experience. So I read this book and then I was, I was hyped up after this book. So I packed a bag, got in the car and I drove to a mountain <laughs> and, and climbed up this mountain and I'm going to have experience with God. And on top of this mountain, I'm there for two or three days. I'm praying, crying out to God. And I remember at one stage, you know, I want to show God how hardcore I am. And I'm on my knees in the rocks, <laughs> crying out to God, and I'm hardcore for Him. And the Lord spoke to me, and He said to me, Andre, what are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you trying? We're in relationship. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? And, and uh, I remember I've, I was in the mount, uh, at the bottom of the mountain. There's a small chalet thing, and... You know, I'm up there, I haven't, I'm not, I haven't eaten, I'm dirty. And, and God said to me, Andre, go down and take a shower. <laughs> That's it. And I climbed all the way down and I took a shower. And then uh, God said to me, cook something, make something to eat. And I made something and I'm sitting and I'm relaxed and clean. And, and he start, so suddenly then started to speak to me. Um, and I've realized that it's, a, it's great. There's so many testimonies out there. There's so many great books but it's that individual or person's experience of how God worked with them. We are individuals. And I'm going to share with you a little bit on God's voice now. And this is a challenge that I had for years. Because years and years I tried to train people to hear God's voice the way I heard it. And it didn't work. Let me try to explain it in this way. Let's say there is four different flows of God's voice. So we'll divide this group into four groups which will mean... 25% in a group. Okay? There's four flows. So I'm sharing on the flow of God's voice that I have in my life. It means that at that moment I am only relevant to a fourth of the group. There's 25% that connects and says, wow, 
yeah, it's amazing. That's how I hear God's voice. I completely understand what you're saying. But then there's, three, there's, a, there's a quarter that sits here and say, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm missing it because it doesn't work that way in my life. And this is something that, that, that the church or preachers have done over years. They've said, this is the way. You know, we say, Jesus is the way, but this is the way I've done it, so this is the way to Jesus. Mm-hmm. He's the way, but, this is, but follow my way to the way. <laughs> and, we, and, we, and people, some get it right, but others don't. And because of that, there's people. So in this group that is sitting right here, each and every person can hear God's voice. Each and every one of you. So the, it's not about trying to, to train you or equip you to hear God's voice the way that I hear it. It's to find the flow of God's voice that's already inside your life. That's it. To find the place where He's already busy speaking to you right now, yesterday, before you came here, the last six months, and activating or refocusing that flow so you can understand how God is speaking to you. So instead of trying to train and equip people to hear God's voice the way I'm hearing it, I'm trying to find the flow that is inside your life already. I'm trying to, to help you to focus on that. We have different flows of God's voice. That's, that's my wording. So one flow, I want to speak about three that is really important, or that's the basic or the beginning. It's, we have three. The one is here, the one is sense, and the one is feel. Okay, I'll try to explain to you. Now, this may sound deep, but it's not deep. It's very basic. It, a child can understand this. It's really, really easy. When we talk about the audible voice of God, the first thing when I say, uh, when I say hearing God's voice, immediately you're thinking, because the word hear to you means audible, means a sound, means that's what, what your connection with that is. So immediately you're thinking audibly. So constantly I have people, in my, people that come to me and say, you know, I, I don't hear God's voice. I hear nothing. There's nothing that I... Now, I'm going to share three different flows with you of God's voice. All three of these flows... The end result of it is God's audible voice. Okay. All three of them. The first flow of God's voice, and I want to, I want you to, as I go through the different flows, I want you to start to think in your life, how does God speak to you and, and what, what is your experience in the things that I'm saying? How did God put you together? Um, God has made us, each and every one as, as an individual, He's made you in a certain way. And that is the way that you are. The main reason why people are missing God, God's voice at this moment is not because God is too far, but because He's too close. Because God is so close to your life that you think it's your own thoughts. You don't start to hear God's voice when someone prays for you or activates it or that's not how it works. You are born with it. That's the reason, you have to understand this, that's the reason why God created you. He created you for communication. He created humans for fellowship. That's the purpose. When we go back to Genesis, the purpose in the garden was fellowship. The main purpose of humans were fellowship. That's it. The garden, the trees, the fruit, everything else was an add-on. The main purpose God created us was fellowship. That's it. That's why we are born. If, if you don't, Get into fellowship with God while you are on earth. Your entire life, you'll feel you're missing something or you're lacking something. When I train on the purpose of God for our lives, you know, our main purpose, we we have a primary and a secondary purpose. Our primary purpose on earth is relationship with God. That's it. Secondary is all these other things. But we make the secondary things primary things. We're so, we're so worried about, you know, what's, what's my purpose on earth? What should I do? Should I be a doctor or policeman or a teacher or, a, or evangelist? Or, a, you know, what does God want from what? The main thing that God wants from you is relationship. That's it. Primary, that's the primary fo- focus on earth. And the amazing thing is you get about 90 years to find that on earth. But a child at the age of 10 can walk 100% in their purpose on earth. By having a relationship with God. Your purpose is not something that you find when you are 50 or 60 years old. As a, in, as a teenager, you can reach your purpose on earth. By having a relationship with God. That's it. Then secondary is all these other things that comes along. 
then it, the, the, you know, where do you want me to stay? Who must I marry? And all these other things that we worry about. That's secondary things. The main thing is relationship with God. That's fellowship. That's communication. That's it. God has a far greater need or desire to speak to you than you will ever have to speak to Him. It's His desire to speak to you. That's what He wants. He made us for fellowship. In the garden, Adam and Eve mess us up. It's amazing, and I want to make this statement, I want you to, to, to understand this, that sin does not influence God's relationship with us. It doesn't. Sin influences our relationship with Him. It takes away our boldness. In Genesis, Adam and Eve messed up, and then God still came to visit them. He knew what they've done, but still He came to spend the fellowship with them. They were the ones that were hiding and said, no, 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 sorry, um, there's something wrong, um, we've done this. They were the ones with excuses that said, no, no, no. The biggest thing that the enemy can do to God is to break communication with you and God. It's the biggest thing that he can do against God, is to break that communication, to break fellowship. That's it. To sell you a lie or to put something in your life that you, you cannot hear God's voice, you're not good enough, you all these reasons, you've messed up, you've sinned, you've just break communication, that's it. Because God desires communication. He desires, you know, and <laughs> prayers are great, but that's for beginners. We have to start somewhere, yes. But fellowship is more than prayer. And thank God for church. Thank God for people that, that feel that's feeling guilty and at least they start to pray. But that's not the, that's the beginning of it. We have to start. It's that's the beginning of relationship. That's the beginning in walking with God. It starts with prayer, but it transforms into a relationship. Suddenly, the hour on Sunday becomes an uh, hour every day. So, suddenly it becomes something that people live with Mondays and Saturdays and, and they are aware of God's presence constantly in their lives. That's it. But it started with that. But people focus so much, you know, people think, uh, you know, I have to pray, so I need to pray at least an hour a week, and if I tick that box, then I'm done and finished. It's like a, something on their shopping list. I've done that, okay, I'm sorted, it's fine. No. It's like I had to remember to buy my wife a gift on her birthday. Okay, it's done. The relationship will never grow further. If I don't start to walk and, and you know, if I'm not more interested than, than just one moment or something with her. I have to walk with God for these things to develop and to become clearer. When we look at the flows of God's voice in our life, there's three. The first thing, the first one is hear, hearing. Hearing has everything to do with audio, audible, any any type of sound so when it comes to hearing God's voice God can speak to us through anything audible music sound anything nature anything that's audible the flow of God's voice can come through that you're driving in the car and you're listening to Bobby van Jarsveld <laughs> and you're listening to that song and suddenly something happens and it speaks straight to your heart audible that moment just one of the flows God can use any any form of audible to speak to you any God can speak to you through sinners through preachers you're sitting in church and for two, two hours the preacher is saying nothing to you then there's this one sentence and it speaks straight to your heart immediately you know exactly God is speaking to you right there those moments are more important than you realize because it's straight from God at that moment that's the type of things that immediately you take a book and you write down the time, the date, and what was said. You keep that. I started to do that a couple of years ago. Whenever God would speak to me, in whatever form it would be, when I know that this is speaking to me right that moment, I just write down the time, the date, and what He said to me. Right now I have about um, three diaries, three books, full of things that God has spoken to me over the last five years. Many times now in my prayer life, I would pray and ask God about a certain situations. Say, Lord, what do I need to do right now? And God would answer me and say, go to book number two, page five. 
and I would go to that book, page 5, and I would read it and it would be the exact answer for where I'm right now. But that date was something that God said to me five years ago. At that moment, it meant nothing to me. And this is what I want you to understand. God may speak to you right now, and it, it, it might not mean anything to you right now. But tomorrow, it will change your life. Completely. God wants to prepare us for what is to come. His word is proceeding. It's ahead of its time. It's some, some words are for right now. Some words are for two years from now. He's preparing us for what is happening. God doesn't want you to... It's not like you're jumping down a cliff and you're shouting and saying, Lord, help, what do I do next? That's not... The Lord wants us to be prepared. So He speaks to us way ahead of time so that we can prepare. But because we don't listen, we have the cliff experience where we jump and we scream, help. He's been speaking for years and years and years, preparing us, preparing us. But we heard it, but it didn't make sense. We didn't understand it at that moment. We, you know, <laughs> when it comes to prophetic, to the prophetic, it's amazing when you prophesy to someone, you can see their eyes are jumping up and down and they're trying to make connections. They're trying to understand it. They're trying to figure out how does this fit into my life right now. Uh, that girl must be, must it be that girl or is it my mother or father or is it, what is he? They're trying to connect it with something that, with the environment where they're right now. And sometimes it does not connect with anything where you're right now. It doesn't mean it's a false prophecy. It doesn't mean, you know, someone missed or just keep it. Keep that prophetic word. Don't worry, don't, don't. Don't be brave and try to explain to a prophet or to someone that he's missed it. Just keep quiet. Just you'll see what will happen. Because later when it comes to fulfillment, you'll be amazed. So don't reject it. Don't go against it. Don't try to, you know, because it doesn't make sense to you right now. I, try, I, I get people, <laughs> when I minister to them, and they don't understand it completely, they would come and see me and they would try to get me to add on to the prophetic word so that it can make sense. You understand? They would, they would say, you know, I don't have, I'm, I'm not saying that town, but I'm, I like this town. So do you maybe mean this town? Or, or they're trying to change it so they can, that's what God is, just take that word, just keep it like that and see what will happen from there. So audible, anything, that's the first flow is audible. So there's people that are sitting here that have those experiences. You Audible audio is important to you. You're watching TV and something happens. Music. Um, it's, the, it's a flow of God that's in, in, in your life already. It's there. It's an audible way that God is speaking to you. And the idea is to be more focused on that. So if it is the area where you've experienced God's voice. Now, I'm sharing with you a couple of flows. It doesn't mean you just have one flow. God can speak to you different, there's two or three flows, you can have everything. I'm trying just to help you to start off to connect you with a place, with a fountain that's already in your life. Where the word of the Lord is already, where God's already speaking. So you, you're aware of what you, should, what you should look for. Okay. If I have a radio here and I try to tune it, and before you get the station, there's that gray, but a white noise. Now that white noise is the mind, okay? And then when you tune into the spirit, you get the sound, okay? So that's what the mind does. Right now, your mind has three different states. I don't want to confuse you. The first state of your mind right now is you are unaware that you're unaware. You don't know that you don't know, okay? Then the second state of your mind is you come, you, you get, you're aware that you're unaware. So you're unaware that you're unaware. But while I'm speaking to you right now, suddenly you, come, you become aware that you're unaware. So something's happening in your mind. You realize that you didn't realize, but you just realized that, okay? <laughs> then the, the awakening or the revelation part is you are aware that you're aware. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every day in your life, you can experience a hundred miracles or nothing. There's, there's so many things that is happening. There's so many ways that God is speaking to you. But if you're constantly unaware of it, you won't see anything. But when you become aware of it, 
then suddenly you realize what is happening around you. You realize what God is saying. You become receptive for what is for his word for that day. And this is what, is what I'm trying to do tonight. I'm trying to take you from a state where you're unaware that you're unaware to a place that you become aware that you're aware. To get to a place where you realize that God is speaking to you. And suddenly, you're leaving here tonight and you're, you're, you're aware for what God wants to do. You're driving around and, and you, your eyes are open and your spirit is open to see what God wants to show you. And suddenly, the same thing that's been there for years, suddenly you realize it's there. You're aware what's happening at that moment in your life. So the first one is audible. Any form of audible. There's so many different forms. Remember what I said. All three of these flows becomes the audible voice of God. I'm going to try to explain to you when it comes to prophecy. And I'll give you an example as I minister to someone. So audible, first one. The second one, so the first one is here. The second one is sense. So the flow of your life is you sense. It's not a year, it's not a feel, you sense. You walk into a place and you sense something. You, you meet someone and you sense something. You pick it up. It's not that you hear it or it, it's a different you sensing it. It's a flow of God's voice in your life. You, in, in worship, it doesn't, you, you, you're walking in town and suddenly you become aware of God's presence. You're sensing God. Do you understand it? Then the third one is feel. The third one is a feeling, physical feeling. You feel something. You are in nature and you experience something. You feel something happening. You're in church and they're worshipping and you feel something. You've got a, it's, a, it's really a feeling. You, you speak to someone and you, there's a feeling that you pick up and just, that you start to flow. And that's the three flows of God's voice. Now, all three of these flows, when you start to focus on it, now, it's not about... The flow is about what God's saying. So the idea is not to say, okay, God is, you know, I feel God. That's not the, well, what do you feel about God? It's not, the, the focus is not, okay, um, you know, I sense God. The, the focus is, what do you sense? So, okay, you're sensing God now, but what is he saying? What, do, what is he showing you? That, that's the focus. What is he communicating to you? That is the area. So it's not just, you know, okay, I'm feeling God or sensing or hearing him. What's he saying? <laughs> now that you hear him, now that you know that he's speaking to you, what is, he, what is he communicating to you? That's really important what he's saying. That's the purest form of communication. That, that way, that flow that's there, there's nothing of man in it. It's, it's completely from God at that moment. So it's so pure, pure at that moment. You have to understand, as a vessel of God, even if I try in my best ability, and God is speaking through me, there's still something of me that comes with it. That's it. But when he speaks, it's pure. There's nothing of man in it. That's, uh, that's the purest, purest form of communication. That, And that's something that we should desire, is to hear from the Lord. And it's not a pastor or duemonies or teacher's responsibility. It's all of our responsibilities to hear from God. I have a lot of people who's coming to me and saying, Andre, what, what's God saying for the year 2016? I can tell you what God has shared with me, but what's He saying to you? You have the same responsibility. What, is, what's, what, God, what did God say to you about your businesses here? What's He saying about your family? Now, we have people who have heard the voice of God. God said to them, move to Puff Adder. It's a town somewhere. Move there. God spoke to them clearly. And they've done that. They moved there as a family. They established a business there. They received those words 15 years ago. Now, in Puff Adder, they've switched the lights down. Everyone has moved away. They've turned off the water, but they're still staying there because God said we should be here. It's true. 15 years ago. His word is proceeding. I, said, I shared with someone last night, and I tried to explain to them, you know. God shares with us what we can handle. Okay. If God wants to share with this couple that he wants them to move to Cape Town right now, but right now, if he shares it with them, they're not ready for it. And they will not do it. And God's aware of that. So what God is saying 
is saying, you know, I want you to move to Bloemfontein for now. <laughs> and that's something that they might do. Cape Town, no way. It's too far. But Bloemfontein, maybe we'll do that. So God says, okay, this is my word now. I want you to relocate to Bloemfontein. And then they move there. And then when they settle, then God gives them time and says, okay, now I want you to go to Cape Town. You understand? Because of their, of their willingness, and God knows all of us. God knows exactly how willing you really are. People, let me tell you, people can say they're willing until God speaks. <laughs> until, until he tells them what he really wants them to do, then, then suddenly they want confirmation and it's done. They, 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 then they're not sure. Because of his grace and his mercy, he, he leads us and he walks with us. But if we are not in constant communication with God, they can miss the calling or purpose of Cape Town in their lives. Because they just followed until Bloemfontein. So there's seasons, there's moments. So there's a season for them. It's God's initial purpose is to get them to Cape Town. But the season before Cape Town is just to move them to Bloemfontein. To help them to, to get re, to uproot themselves. And to, but now they're sitting in Bloemfontein and they say, no, no, no. We don't want to hear any other prophetic words. We don't want to hear from God. God said we should be here. He said it this day, this time, and we're here, and that's it. And they become stagnant in what God wants to do because they don't listen to his preceding word. And this is something that you have to understand. God does not just speak once a year. And, you know, yes, sometimes he'll say the opposite thing. It's, it's, it's not, there's not just, God doesn't speak to you just once in a lifetime. There's, there's purposes and these things and he wants and it changes so he sends you there for that time and then he wants you to do this and then and it's all part of his plan initial plan to where he, to what he wants to complete at the end but we don't understand these things you know you don't understand god wants you to start your own there's a man that i ministered to last night and um when i saw him immediately the lord said to me that he'll have his own business one day that's god's initial purpose for him but right now he doesn't believe that he has the ability to do that. And because of that, there are certain positions that God's sh taking to. And I shared with him last night, I shared with him that the Lord showed me that um, he'll, he'll, um, uh, there's an HR position that's opening his life. That we, where God's going to take him. And the Lord's going to take him to that position to teach him how to work with staff and how to work with, with uh, leadership or management above him. Finish for where God wants to take him. Then I said to him, the second place where the Lord is taking him is the Lord is making him a PA, a personal assistant to a great man, a businessman. He'll be a, he'll be a personal assistant to him. And immediately he said, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be a PA. You know, obviously, no one wants to be that. But God is, God is positioning him with a, with a businessman that is really success, um, successful, that has achieved certain things, and he will be in that anointing and in this atmosphere, and he will hear things, learn things. And the third step I said to him last night is he'll plant his own business. And I said to him, the man that, that you'll be a PA to is the person that's going to fund your business. He's going to believe in your, in, your, in your vision. So the initial purpose that God has for me is to get there. But there's a couple of things that needs to be developed. If he starts a business right now, he's going to fail within the first month. There's certain things that he needs to learn. Certain places that he needs to go. What if, what if, where you are right now is exactly where God wants you to be? Will you still pray to leave then? What if where you are right now is exactly part of God's plan you're looking at it, at the situation you're thinking you know I just want to get out of this I just I don't want to be you you can't continuously praying and saying Lord please move me please I'm praying for I'm praying for a next for the next season you, what if God what if there's something right there that plays a vital part in your future far bigger than you thinking what if that town where you are right now is part of God's plan Exactly. God doesn't make mistakes. He is so sensitive and careful to things in the smallest detail. Smallest, smallest detail. Things that we do that we don't realize that we are exactly where God wants us to be. The thing that changes, and remember I spoke to you about unaware that you're unaware. 
So you're sitting in a position and you're unaware that you're unaware. You're sitting there and you're thinking you just end up there because you made a, you made a bad choice in life. But then you realize that you, you become aware that you're aware. You realize that you're at a place and God wants you exactly there. And then suddenly everything changes around that position because you see the purpose of where you are. Becoming aware that God has a plan for you there and it changes everything in that situation where you are right now. If God wanted to promote you, He would have done it already. The question is not if you, it's not if you, if you pray enough, you'll be promoted. It's not how it works. My wife doesn't have to beg and scream loud enough for me to feed her. I'm not going to feed her because of her prayers. Not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to feed her because of love. I'm going to take care of her because of love. It's not, a, it's not about how, she, how high she can jump. It's not it. She doesn't have to impress me through certain skills or abilities. Through relationship, immediately I'll, I'll do it and, and there's certain things that I want to fill. And that's in our callings and our purpose with God. So the first one is here. Then we have sense and then we have feel. And all three of these flows develops into an audible voice. Uh, here. Now, let me try to explain this to you. So when we talk about uh, C, so we have um, the fourth one is C. So we have here, sense, feel, and see. When it comes to seeing, it's everything that's vivid. Everything. Pictures, movies, dreams, visions, everything that is vivid in seeing. Now, we have different prophets um, and they have different functions in that. Now, I am a seer. What I'm called to do and the flow in my life is I see. So, to, mo to me, s vivid things are really important in my life because that's the way that God speaks to me. So, pictures, colors, my environment, nature, where I am is vital to me because that's how I hear God's voice. And it's constant. So, it's a constant flow. So, let me try to explain to you. When I minister to, to someone, can I, can, I, can, I, can I use you? Just stand there. Huh? Stand. So, when I minister to him, I want to try to explain to you the flow. If I minister to him, I see pictures and I interpret the pictures. So, I, uh, when I look at him, God starts to speak to me uh, in a picture. So, I see a picture and I interpret that picture. I see a second picture and then I interpret it. And that's how it works. And then the pictures become so fast that it becomes audible. Do you get it? <laughs> so the first time I ministered to someone, I saw a picture, one picture. And out of one picture, I would prophesy half an hour. I would look for detail in the picture. I would look for colors. I would look for any detail that I could find in that vision. Anything. Now, this is one of the mistakes that seers make. They are, this is their weakness. Okay. Weakness of seers is the following thing. They phone you and they say, listen, I saw this picture of a tree. And you don't have that flow in your life. The flow of God's voice in your life is to saints. So they give you a picture and you have no idea what to do with it. And this is something that in every flow of God's voice in our lives, between that flow to the person, we have interpretation. And the, the, the weakness that people have is not God's voice, but the interpretation. We all have His voice. It's the interpretation part where we struggle because we don't know how to interpret it. We don't know what to do with it. So because I'm a seer and I, and I get pictures, I never tell the person the picture. I give them the interpretation. The best person, if I have a lot of people, because I see, so dreams and visions, those things are important, so I can interpret dreams. So people phone me and they say, I had this dream. And they give me their dream and I interpret it for them. Now, the best person to give the interpretation of the dream is the one who received it. The reason for that is we have different ways how we interpret. To her, the color purple has a certain meaning and to me a different meaning. 
So what does it mean to you? Purple, what does it mean to you? Purple, the color purple. What do you see? What, what does it mean? If you see purple and you have to have a, what love. do you think it is? Thank you, love. To me, it means royalty. Is, who's right here? That's what it means to her. <laughs> That's her interpretation. So now God wants to speak to her. And he's saying, he's showing her a purple heart. So she can get it. He makes it real obvious, a purple heart. So she comes to me and she says to me, Andre, I had a dream last night. I saw a purple heart. Please help me with the interpretation. I said to her, okay, God is saying that he loves royalty. <laughs> That's it, what I get. And it's what I get, truly. That's what it means to me. So we miss interpretations because... We don't, we don't learn how to interpret. That's the problem with dream books. That's the problem with, with you know, uh, uh, the, the dream book is the person's interpretation who wrote it. They're not wrong. Not. But that's, that's what they see. But we have different interpretation of things. So it's important if you're a seer or if God speaks to you in, in seeing. It's very important for you to start to learn to interpret what it means. And it's really easy. Because, so if I take this dream, she had a dream last night of, of a purple heart, and, and uh, if, we, if we take a dream, there's just so many detail in that. But um, what God is saying, trying to say in that moment is just that he loves her, that's it. So the interpretation of that dream is the time, date, write it down, and write down, God loves me, that's it. Two years from now, she has a nervous breakdown. She doesn't know what to do. There's no one she can phone. She's abandoned. She F, and she's crying out to God saying, Lord, I, what's happening in my life? Did you forget me, God? And God says to her, just go read your diary. Go look at that. And you, she goes look and looks at that word. And that form communication from God, that word is a life. Mm -hmm. When she reads it, <laughs> it starts to develop and she sins, starts to experience the love of God because of that word. Do you understand what I, what I, when I talk about seeing? So it's important to find a way that, that you see and, and what, it, what is happening. Now, so if I minister to him, so immediately I see, um, I've, uh, it's, it's difficult for me because I've, I've learned um, to hear God's voice audibly. So to, to break it down now, to go back to the picture, it's so fast. It's, uh, the picture comes and immediately I start to, this picture speaks to me. I immediately hear God's voice and I can start to flow in that. But I see picture after picture after picture. But I never, because that's the way that God speaks to me, I never give the person the picture. Because God showed it to me. So I really get a lot of prophetic words of people that says, Andre, God just spoke to me. He woke me up 2 o'clock in the morning and he showed me a car. That's it. I've got no idea what it means. And I have to be honest with them. So I say to them, I, I don't know what it means. I really don't know. Go pray about it. Go ask God. Surely if God would give you the picture, He would give you the meaning or the interpretation of that. It's not your responsibility to tell me what you've seen. You need to give me the word. Just prophesy to me. Give me the prophetic word. Share with me what God's saying. You know, I have got no idea. God's just trying to communicate with you in the flow that's in your life. Wait for the interpretation. What is God saying that at that moment right now? Thank you, Father, for his life. Now, I want to do some practical things as I minister to him to try to make it practically and, and show you different ways and different flows of God's voice and to minister prophetically. So we have these different flows that is there. Now, my flow that I have in my life is C. So I see pictures and immediately it, it moves. Um, the colors that he's wearing right, right now, everything of that is speaking to me. I've, I've learned to interpret the colors. People, people wear certain things for certain reasons. They feel attracted to it. They feel connected to it. They, it, it has an impact on, on who they are. You know, they don't wear something that they hate. They buy something that they're they connected to. You know, I, if I speak to the woman here, you buy a dress that you feel connected to. 
You buy, you're wearing a color, you have something that you, you like to wear it. You don't get dressed, you don't, when you get dressed, you don't look for the worst and ugliest and worst thing you can find in your cupboard and then put it on. <laughs> you go through everything and over again and, and until you find something that you like and, and often you'll go for the exact same thing. You have a favorite thing that you like to wear and eventually you're thinking, you know, I can't wear this every day, I have at least have to <laughs> wear something else every now and then. But you like that. You have this certain jacket. You like it. You'll wear it every day because you like to wear it. You like to have those things speak. The colors speak. The way there's everything of that has detail on it and has purpose in it um, in those things. Okay. So when it comes to so this is the different flows that is there. Now I um, with the prophetic I can't switch it on and off. I can't do that. It's on constantly. So I, I don't have the way, so I have to, when I have, when I, when I'm off, I try to be off. <laughs> so I, if I go to a restaurant, I sit in a corner next to a wall where I don't see anything. <laughs> I don't look at the way if he's because I don't do anything. I ask him, what's the best thing to order? Yes, I'll have that. That's it. <laughs> because if I start to look at a person, then immediately the word starts to flow. Immediately uh, things, so, so to me that, it's, it's, a, it's a, a challenge in a sense because I, you know, there's a reason and a purpose for everything. I don't want to, I'm not a, a, a parking lot prophet that's standing on corners every day and prophesy. But it's become a lifestyle. It's what I do. It's my life. I prophesy every day of my life. Every day. So all those things, you start to learn that everything has purpose. It's very easy for me to hear God's voice. Right now, I don't pray anymore to hear His voice. I don't fast anymore to hear his voice. I do, I do fast every night from about 19 to 5 in the morning. That's <laughs> it. But I don't have to do those things anymore. My senses are turned on. I've, I've learned exactly how to, uh, when I'm tired or weak spiritually, I've learned what to do to, to stir up those senses again. No, exactly. It's a constant flow that's there. It's something, when it comes to God's voice, it's something that gets turned on and it's there. That's it. When you, when, you, when you know God's voice, you know His voice. That's it. You, it's not something you know, that you, you have to start up every morning. or you, It's not like a kettle that needs to get warm <laughs> and a fire. And a, it's there. His voice is there. The question is not about His voice, but what is He saying? That's what's important. To follow His ways and, and what He's doing. So I've learned different things from the Spirit and from God and the way things that He likes and things that He dislikes and things that the Spirit encourages and things that, that um, things that um, that suppresses the Holy Spirit and things that stirs the Holy Spirit. I've learned certain things. So I in the prophetic if I if I'm if I am tired or my spiritual senses is really low there's different ways that I've learned how to pick it up and how to go with it now the first thing is if I touch someone immediately the prophetic flows as well so if I don't see anything I'll shake his hand and immediately the Lord will start to speak to me so it's my it's a, it's a it's it's another flow that I've learned in prophesying you can, if, if, you, if you see prophets ministering, you'll pick it up and you'll see very often they'll go to people and they'll touch them. They'll pray for them. They'll stand with them. And as they touch them, the flow starts to, to, to function. That's number, number one. The second thing is word of encouragement. The purpose of a New Testament prophet, the main purpose of a New Testament prophet is to strengthen the person's relationship with God. That's it. It's the main purpose. And the boundaries of God's voice in that sense is to build comfort and encourage. So what happens is as soon I asked him to stand up and immediately when he stood, the Holy Spirit is interested in what's about to happen. So the Holy Spirit starts to move in. The Holy Spirit loves it when we comfort and encourage people. So what I'll do, one of the other flows that I'll use is I'll, before I minister to him, I'll encourage him and I'll say to him, you know, the, the jacket that you are wearing is really something that suits you. It's really who you are and uh, it really represents your character and who you are. 
And when I do that, immediately the Holy, the Holy Spirit starts to move in. Because He loves it when we build people. So now suddenly the Holy Spirit is here and He's here to start to minister and to function. When we, when we speak negatively about people, the Holy Spirit stands back. He doesn't want to be part of it. But when we start to encourage people or bless them, then suddenly He starts to move in and He wants to... He wants to be part of what's about to happen, and he wants to encourage all the gifts to, to, to flow in his life. Okay, so I'll touch him. Um, that's one of the things I'll encourage him, and um, or prayer. Before I minister to him, I'll pray for him. I'll just stand with him, even if I see nothing about his life. If I start to pray for him, suddenly the flow will be there. There's many of you that's, that has that flow of God's voice in your life. You don't see or hear maybe anything, but when you start to pray for someone, then suddenly, you, suddenly things start to happen. It, it activates that flow. That's how God speaks to you. So use that. You use that as a, as a point to, to, to begin and, and to minister. Is Just start to pray with Him, a short prayer. Father, I pray. What is your name? Tian. Tian. Father, I pray for Tian. Thank you, God, for his good heart and his good intention and character and the man who he is and what you want to do with his future and where he wants, you want to take him. Lord, I pray for that in Jesus' name. It's three different flows, and immediately, because of it, the Lord, Holy Spirit starts to... You don't have to do all three of them. I'm just trying to show you different ways in how to encourage the Holy Spirit to start to minister and start to work. Okay. Tian, you're, you're a very dynamic man. Very dynamic in everything that you do. Very adventurous. Uh, I want to say you are a man of quality. Quality, good quality. A man of noble, noble character, a noble man. God wants to use you, and for a long time... The presence of God or the anointing of God has been looking for someone to rest upon. For years it's, it seems like where you are and the area where you are situated that the Spirit has been moving, 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 waiting for someone to rest upon. And the Spirit has, has been going or has been upon a lot of qualified men, people that has, that has different degrees and different qualities and different, great abilities and that, but it just didn't rest in that. But I experienced that God's Spirit has found the person that he wants to rest on, and it's you. God wants to use you. And I want to say to you tonight, you might not have the right qualifications. You might not have the right abilities or talents that other people have, but you are the chosen of the Lord. God has chosen you for what he wants to do. There's so many different things that are starting to flow out of your life, and even talents, abilities that you think you're, you're not maybe good at, but the Holy Spirit is going to equip you and train you within those areas. There is something, there's a strong, strong flow of music that flows out of your life. Music that flows. I don't know if you are playing a music instrument yet, but you should. I see you playing and the Spirit is just moving through your life and through your hands as, as, as you minister and as you share. You have a very unique anointing that rests upon your life. Not something that everyone has. Something that's very sensitive to the Spirit and to the move of God. There is a move of God that is coming. A fresh, fresh move. And I want to say to you tonight that you will be part of that move. You'll be part of that movement. It's not just one man. Several men that God's calling to this movement will something very, very unique, a fresh, fresh anointing, things that haven't been seen or done before, a new, new thing. But I want to say to you tonight that you're a vital part of what God is about to do. You're a vital part of the revival that God, it might, the word revival is not the right wording because it's something that people cannot box in or call. There's no name for this, what God's about to do. Some people will say it's a revival. Some people will call it different things. But it's a fresh, fresh move of God. And God is entrusting you with those things in your life and where you are. Father, I want to pray with Tian right now. Thank you, God, that you've commissioned him and you've purposed him for what you want to do and where you want to take him in his life. Lord, I see a David that is anointed. And your word says that when Samuel poured the oil upon David, that the, the power, the Spirit of the Lord was powerfully on him from that day, from that moment. Father, I pray that this moment is moment, and as he leaves here tonight, as he leaves here this moment, that your power will be powerfully upon him from this moment on in his life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Maybe see seated. Everything that I shared with him right now, I saw pictures. So as I saw the pictures, 
I try to interpret it, the picture that is coming in. So immediately, as I said to him, I see the this, this spirit. So I saw a group of people, and I saw the spirit that's hovering and, and looking for someone to rest upon. So it's a picture that I saw. I interpret that picture. I don't give him the picture. So then I saw the second picture that came, and it's amazing because God doesn't show me the second picture bef before I share the first one. I don't know where it's going. I don't know where, exactly what he wants to say or where we're moving. I know right at that moment the Spirit is looking for someone. If I don't share that, the Spirit will not continue to flow. Many times, God will just share with you the first step. He will show you a person, and, and that's it. And He's waiting for you to take a step of faith to go to that person. He's sharing a short word with you, something really short, just a word of encouragement. But he's waiting for you just to take that first step. And as you take that first step, suddenly it activates the rest, starts to flow, starts to move. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can you identify the flow of God's voice in your life? Can you identify? Is there someone here that cannot identify, that says, no, 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 I have none of that. I've never heard God, never seen Him, never sensed Him, never felt Him, never nothing. Please, you're welcome to put up your hand. No one. Okay. So, how does God speak to you um, when we talk about flows? Mostly see. See. So, you see things. What do you see? Um, if you say see, visions, pictures. dreams, visions, pictures. What do you experience? Um, hearing, seeing, okay. feeling, all that. Through what? Through, like, if you, let's I say, hearing. God ordered, like you speak, okay. I've heard God speak in my heart. Okay. I've seen God. I've okay. So, do you see different flows and things? I was trying to explain some of it to you. Probably more audible, but inside. Okay. Yeah, like inside, all the inside is sense. sense. But the sense, sense. Devel everything develops into audible. In the beginning, you're just sensing things, but as you start to be obedient to that, then it just becomes audible, goes fast. So, sense. So, and you? Yes. Uh, I have heard God's okay. voice by yeah. the grace of God, but it's been in life and death yeah. situations. I've heard an audible voice. So is that how God speaks to you, audible? What else? And also I see pictures. You see pictures. Okay, thank you. Sir? Yes? Sense and dreams. Okay. Those things, and this is very important for you to find the way that God speaks to you, and it's something that you should constantly be aware of. So if you know, if you know that the way that God's spoken to you previously is through sensing things, you should be attend to those moments when it happens. When you're driving in the car and you sense something, it shouldn't be something that you just avoid and think it's oh, it's normal or it's it's maybe it's, it should be something that you become attentive to to tune in and say God what is it that you want to show me right now because you've you've found the flow you found the fountain it's like a place where you draw water from you found it you don't have to go and look for it anymore you know this is how God speaks to me so you're not at a place anymore where you're praying and saying, God, please speak to me, please speak to me, please speak to me. What is, what is the word? You found a place where you go to. So you've realized that you can, as, as a person that sins, you can go anywhere or be at any place. But when, this, when the sins becomes there, you realize, okay, the Lord's speaking to me right now. What is He saying? What is He showing me? What do I, what do I sense at this moment? I, I can't explain to you how important those moments are for your future. But God is saying there at that moment. It is, it is so big at that moment, but we don't realize it. Because we, it, it's, it's random moments where, you know, where you, you're in the restroom, you're in, in, a, in a restaurant, you're in a mall, you're in, uh, in a car. And because, you, that it's, because you're not in a, in a moment or place where there's a spiritual experience, you, you take it lightly. You're thinking that, um, I don't know why I had this, but you don't realize how important it is and what God is trying to show you. Like I said earlier, the Lord is trying to prepare you for things to come. Years ago, um, I was in, in Johannesburg uh, here in Santon in uh, Morningside, and um, the, uh, there was a lady that called me uh, to a cell group, to a meeting. And uh, I came here, and uh, when I got to the meeting, 
I realized, she came out and she said, listen, okay, I want you to, to, to minister to these people prophetically. And I've realized that, that the majority of the people that are sitting there is government officials, the cell group. It's a lady that has a cell group for some of the government at her house. So immediately when I got there, I realized, okay, wow, this is serious. Not just that, immediately I picked up one guy's spirit and um, he was busy with something in his life and he wanted me to bless or to confirm that he's doing the right thing, even though he wasn't. So immediately I picked up that, that he's very adamant that I need to publicly, before them, agree with what he's doing, even though I knew it's not right. Mm. So I had, immediately I had this, this situation where I didn't know, no, how, how am I going to handle the situ situation that is happening right now? So I'm standing outside in the parking lot, and I'm praying suddenly. I'm saying, Lord, you have to help me. I don't know what to do right now. And I'm praying in tongues, and I, I'm scared, and I don't know how, will I, you know how to do this now, how to handle this situation. I'm busy. I'm really stressed. And, and the Lord speaks to me, and he says to me, Andre, what are you doing? I said, God, I, I'm really praying right now. You have to help me. Um, this is serious. Um, this one guy threatened me that he's going to put me in prison if I if I don't say certain things. So immediately I was <laughs> stressed on every level. So I'm standing there. I said, God, you really have to help me right now. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle, how to handle the situation. And then, and, I'm, and then the Lord said to me, he said, Andre, do you remember two weeks ago you were driving in the car? I said, yes, I remember. He said, remember suddenly I spoke to you and I, I said to you, you have to start to pray. And I remember two weeks ago I was driving the car and uh, suddenly something happened in my spirit and I just started to pray in tongues while I was driving. And God said, do you remember that? I said, yes. And God said, that moment was for tonight. I was preparing you for this moment. You were prepared. Go in. I knew about this moment. And then I realized, and this is something that you have to understand, that God prepares us. So I think I'm standing in that situation. I'm thinking, I don't know what to do now. I really need a breakthrough now. I, you know, that's what I'm thinking. But I don't realize the Spirit of the Lord has been preparing me already. I didn't know what that was about. So many times in our lives, we have these moments where God speaks to us for certain things. These moments of prayer where God tells you, you need to pray right now. You just know you need, just do it, just pray. Don't try to figure it out. Don't, don't think something's wrong. Don't, just pray. Just pray. God is preparing you for the future, for something that's to come, something that he wants to put in place for you. Okay. We're going to end from here. I want to minister to a couple of you. We have 20 minutes left. Um, so I just want to focus on those different flows. So to make you aware of the way that God is speaking to you. That's the first place. From that place, it's the same area where you prophesy from. But if you cannot hear God's voice for yourself, how can you prophesy to people? You have to hear from Him. You have to hear from the Lord. I, I said this at a, at a, at a Dutch Reformed Church in Cape Town a couple of years ago, and then an old guy in front stood up. He said, he doesn't understand. He says, why do I give tithe in church? I give tithe so that the Domini can pray and hear God's voice for me. I don't have time to pray and to hear from the Lord. It's all of our responsibility to hear from the Lord. All of us. It's not someone else's responsibility to hear on my behalf. Yes, God uses pastors and leaders and speaks through them. But you have a responsibility to wait upon the Lord and say, God, speak to me. What do you want? What do you want to, what, what do you want to do? I want to share something with you on waiting upon the Lord. When I started to wait upon God, so after I had that hardcore experience, then the Lord said to me, go down, shower, eat something, okay, and I'll speak to you. And the Lord spoke to me. Then I realized that I hear the voice of God clearly. Clearly, when I'm relaxed, when I'm in a hurry, and when I'm stressed out, then that's when I miss it, that's when I make mistakes. But when I'm relaxed, it's easy for me to hear His voice. So when I wait upon the Lord, there's a certain personally way that I've developed it. When I wait upon God, I pray, read some Bible and that, but when it comes to the part where I wait upon Him, I have found a comfortable place in my house, I make a cup of coffee, I go sit there, I put my phone off and I say, Lord, speak to me. And I just sit there. 
There's no timer that's running for 10 minutes. I just sit there. Five minutes, 10 minutes. Just wait upon the Lord. Just sit. Immediately my mind goes and says, uh, did you remember to feed the dogs? And I'm, I have a piece of paper and I write down, remember, feed the dogs. So I can get the thought out of my head. And I sit, just wait upon God. Immediately then my mind goes, that you, you have to remember to phone that guy. You, have, you, you said you're going to phone him back and you have just write down his name. Remember to phone him. So it's done. I'm not going to forget that. Your mind starts to run all over. Suddenly he wants to remind you of everything. Yes, wait upon God. <laughs> and then, then, now, I want to explain to you something. Faith is part of our lives. That's the foundation of Christianity, is faith. The righteous will live by faith. So the first five times that I've waited upon God, I didn't experience anything at all. Nothing. I didn't hear God, didn't feel God, didn't sense Him, didn't, didn't nothing. 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 First five times. Five days. Wait upon God, nothing. Then a couple of, not exactly after each other, but then the Wednesday again, waited upon Him, nothing. But every time when I got up there, I made a choice. And I said, God, I didn't sense you or pick you up right now with my five senses. But I know something happened with me spiritually now. That's what I choose to believe. And I left there. I didn't experience anything. Second time, third time, both of them, same thing. Sat down, waited upon God, nothing, nothing. But I got up from there and said, God, my life will never be the same again because of what just happened to me. Something happened to my spirit now. I know it. I didn't feel it. I didn't sense it, I didn't hear it, I didn't get a vision, I didn't get a dream, I didn't, nothing. But something happened. I know it. And I started to get in, into that, to that habit of waiting upon God. I'm not going to focus on my five senses and, and be moved. So the enemy, of course, my thoughts come and says, this doesn't work. This is useless. No, isn't there a better way to waste time? <laughs> that's, that's what my thought says. You know, it is... That's, but I know that something is happening in the spirit. It sometimes takes a while for our spirits to respond or for our senses to pick it up. So a couple of times I went to sit down, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. And then one day I sat down. When I sat down, immediately the words of God flowed. That's it. So, and it's never stopped. It's never stopped. I don't have to... So if I, um, God shares a lot of things with me. And the majority of what he shares with me is about me. It's not about other people. So as soon as I start to listen to his voice, he starts to speak to me about my life and, 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 and things like that. It's, 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 it's a natural, it's a relationship where I am with him. Yes, sometimes now I do go through difficult times and challenges and I'm tired spiritually. And I don't, sometimes, yes, still, I go sit down and I don't experience anything. But I've learned to cross those things. I've learned to get beyond that. I know something is happening in my spirit. As you're sitting here right now, just tonight, there's major things that are happening inside your spirit. It doesn't mean because you see it or you're aware of it or you're not, that it's not happening. It's happening. So I encourage you to make time in your life to wait upon the Lord. Just to wait upon God. Sit and say, look. You know, one of the names of the Holy Spirit is Counselor. People get counseled today by everyone, but not by the Spirit. But it's his, it's his job, it's his responsibility, it's his profession. Every now and then, as I wait upon the Lord, I sit and I say, Holy Spirit, please counsel me. You, you know exactly what I'm going through. You know how to deal with me. You know where's my weaknesses. You know where... Counsel me, counsel me, counsel my heart. Just allow him to minister to me, to minister to me. Be receptive to that. Okay, are you with me? Any questions before I minister to you? Specifically on what we spoke about tonight, God's voice. Any questions in that? One or two, and then we'll go on. Anyone? Come on, if you can think of something. Ask a question that you th that you know the person next to you wants to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Paul, come on. You, I know you have good questions. Yes? I think the, the one main thing that, like, for example, you said sense. 
is you'd always always just think, well, is this me? Is it my That's it. nice <laughs> thoughts, or yeah. is it the enemy, or is it, what is it? You yeah. Know? And uh, because a lot of the things that you sometimes sense, some are mundane, but some are a little bit far out. And you think, well, can I make a decision based on this? It's influencing not just me, but a variety of people. So, yeah. Yeah, any commentary. Yeah. So, when it comes to God's voice, there is there is boundaries that I've put in place uh, for people that begins. God's voice always builds, comforts, and encourages. Always. The enemy's voice still kills and destroys. So in the beginning, with, with sensing and feeling and hearing those things, I filter it through that in the beginning. Uh, and then... I take what, then I learn. So, but I don't do it with every word that I receive now because I've learned to know His voice. I know God's voice now. So I've learned how to respond and now to listen to His voice. But in the beginning, God spoke to me. I said, Andre, go jump off the bridge. And then I would go to the bridge and I would test it. I would say, if I jump off here, would it build me? No. <laughs> Will it comfort me? No. Will it? It's not God. Would it steal? Yes. So I've learned in the beginning, but as, and that's for people that are starting, just to learn, yes, Andre, but God disciplines us and He confronts us and He gives us direction, yes. God has the ability to hit you so hard, but it feels so good. <laughs> that's His ability. God's ability is not to destroy. Yeah. We do it. We don't have the ability to correct people. We do it, but in the, in in the sense we, we destroy the character while we're doing it. God has a different God can God has rebuked me in my life. But it was the greatest moments in my life. The way the way he does it. Because it doesn't break me as a person. He he corrects me and helps me. So we test it in that way. But then we learn to hear his voice. And then we flow and we learn to, to respond and what to do with it. There is obviously a time limit on certain of these things. And we have to as we walk with Him, we learn to become mature in those things. And that's why I say the first, the first step is to write down the time and day, just to get it, because we forget it, to just to remember it. First step is just to write down the time and the date of those things and then um, start to keep track of what God's saying, what does He want, want to do. God doesn't, <laughs> because, like I explained to you, that He wants to prepare us, we... We don't have those moments where God says to you, pack all your bags right now and move to India. He prepares us. Um, when the Lord moved us to, to George, He did it and He spoke to me a couple of times. He said to me, Andre, me and my wife, He said to me, I want you to move down. I said, yes, Lord, we'll speak about it later. <laughs> and, I could, and I went on with what I was doing and, and then He spoke to me again. He said, I want you to move down. I want you to be there. So I said, yes. In a couple of months, we're definitely going to go down. That's the plan. And we went on. And so eventually, because of the fact that it had an impact on my family and my wife, and so we sat down, I spoke to her. I said, listen, this is what, we, what I sense. Um, um, we prayed about it, and she heard from God, and she did the same thing. And the Lord said to both of us, you need to move. I said, yes, we, yes, we are going, definitely going to move. <laughs> so, but it took a year, and we did nothing about it. But he spoke to us a couple of times. And then I was returning from a ministry trip, and uh, I was driving from the airport on my way to the place where we were staying in Pretoria. And on the way home, the Lord spoke to me in a car and said, I want you to go home, I want you to pack whatever you can get in suitcases and move right now. Right now. Right now. But he's, he's spoken to us a couple of times, and we postponed it and postponed it, and yes, yes, we're going, yes, we are. And I said to my wife, we need to move right now. Went home, packed, and we got on a flight and moved right there. On, we didn't even have a house. We moved right there. On the plane, on my way there, I arranged the house. I said, uh, so my wife said, so where are we staying? I said, just give me an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. I phoned the agent said, please, could you show me some houses? He said, yes. I said, just drive me around. I'll know exactly. We drove around, up and down, up and down, and I uh, didn't care about the prices or anything where it is. I just wanted, I knew God to show us the house. She said, this one is, she said, what price range? I said to her, there's no price. She's just drive me, show me. Four or fourth or fifth house that I saw, I knew exactly that's where we're staying. So I said, this is where we're staying. We're taking it. Um, that's it. 
the street name of the house we were staying. So, so we, move, we move in there. It's fully furnished, we're staying in this house. This is our new home. Move in. And for a week, God doesn't say anything. We moved. We've done exactly what God told us. Nothing. So what now? We moved all the way down there. We hear, we responded. We've nothing. So I walk out the house in the street. And I say, Lord, speak to me. What's happening? We're here now. But nothing's happening now. What, what do we, where do we go from here? You know, we're in the middle of nowhere now. we there on the coast. And what do we do? You know, you can only watch, look at the beach for so long. <laughs> so <laughs> what now? And this, I look up at the, the board, the street name. And the street name that we're staying in is Divot, D-I-V-O-T. Remember what I'm sharing about pictures. I don't play golf. We stay on a golf estate. I don't play golf. Obviously, every street has something to do with golf. I go down, I go back into the house. I Google the name, Divot. And Divot means to, re to reroute something or someone from the area. To take its roots out. It's a. It's when people when one, when they heat the divot, they remove some of the soil. So take soil from one place and put it in another area, a different place, different area. We were staying there. So everything those the God, listen to what I'm saying. I didn't hear his voice for a week. Because I didn't look, I didn't see. When I look out the window, the board is there. He's speaking, but I'm not aware of that. I'm looking for something else. I'm waiting for something to happen. But it's there. When I become aware of it, suddenly I realize. And then the Lord spoke to, to us specifically. And he said to us that it will become a place for us for rest. That's it. He's rerouting us from, from, every, from where we come from and where we are. And putting us right there for where he wants to take us. And to us, George is a Bloemfontein before we go to Cape Town. <laughs> so... <laughs> Because we won't move. <laughs> I'm very committed to a place, so. But now we will. Now there's a possibility. Now we'll say, okay, we'll go wherever God wants us. But there's no way we would have even left Pretoria. No way. You wanted to ask something? No questions. Okay. Does it? Do I answer your question? Is it? Is something in there? Yes. Okay. So it's important. Um, you know, to pray about and, and uh, the connection. I want to speak to you as the minute on confirmation. To me, there is a sickness. It's worse than AIDS, worse than cancer. It has a beautiful Hebrew name, but the, the English for that sickness is confirmation. Okay. Let me try to explain to you. If God's saying to you tonight, I want you to go home right now and withdraw all your savings that you have, and go to Mauritius right now for a week vacation. You're going to leave this place. You're going to be so excited because the Lord told you to do it. But if God says to you tonight, I want you to go home, withdraw all your savings and sow it into this church. You're going to say, I need to pray. I need to get confirmation about this. <laughs> the problem with confirmation is people often want confirmation on the things they don't want to do. When they feel comfortable with it, they'll, they don't need it. They'll do it. But if, but if they don't want to do it, then they want to pray about it. And confirmation is a beautiful way to delay God's plan. <laughs> it's a very beautiful religious way that the enemy uses. Okay? Confirmation is something for, for people that's just saved right now. They, they need confirmation for anything. But if you're in relationship with God, imagine, the day when I got married... I confirmed to my wife. I love her. I gave her my vows. So after three years of marriage, or eight years now, it was our anniversary now, I walk into our house and I run to her to greet her. And she says, no, 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 go stand outside and confirm your vows again before you come in. <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore. We're in relationship. There was a day for that that was important, but now I'm in relationship I can hear her voice. I can hear God's voice. So confirmation can, be, can become something very religious to just delay what God wants to do. It's something that we should be careful about. You know, if I, I shared it with a group last night. If I, this is a challenge with the Bible at the moment. We open the Bible and when we open the Bible, he's 
right there, the writer or the group or the preacher is speaking to different groups at different places. Okay. If I say to the group tonight, everyone that's sitting here, everyone that has eyes, please go stand outside. Everyone is going to stand up and leave. But if I'm specific and I say, okay, everyone in this building that has blue eyes, go. I'm speaking to a specific group of people. And that is something that we have to realize with the word of the Lord. That at different stages, he's speaking to different crowds and different people. We think it's everyone is included at every conversation, what is happening. It's different things. Now, where we are right now tonight, I'm speaking to a different group. I'm speaking to a group tonight that have decided that they want to follow Jesus. That's who I'm speaking to. The way that I speak to you and the way that I speak to, to, to the whole of Rudapurt at this moment is different. Because in Rudapurt there's people that have, that have not decided to follow God yet. They still want to follow their own ways. They still want to do this. So to that group, I say, you need confirmation. Because they still at a place where they want to sin. And they're still confused whether I should sin or not. So pray for confirmation whether it's the right thing to do or not. <laughs> it's where they are. But where you are tonight, the reason why you came out on a Friday night is because you have a certain desire and you want God. I'm speaking to a different group. I'm speaking to people that want, want God in their life. So spiritually, you are at a different, at a completely different level. Where other people are, completely different level. The challenge here is that in a group setting, we're speaking to people at different levels, but we're giving the same word. The word that you received in the first year of your salvation is, is not applicable to you right now anymore. It was important for that season of your life. So now I'm taking someone that is, that is following God, that loves God, that hears His voice, that prays for the sick, and I'm putting you under that doctrine and I'm saying to you, listen, God is saying you have to decide tonight whether you want to follow Him or not. And you're sitting here and thinking, I want to follow God. Maybe I've missed it. Maybe I'm... Do you understand what I'm saying? And you go down, you go back 10 years back. Because of the word. It's the right word but the wrong group. And that's, this is what's something that's important when it comes to God's voice. Because we're speaking to a group and, and the speaker is speaking to someone, if we can say ages, someone at, at the age of 8 and the, at the age of 50 at the same time. But they're at different levels. And that's why God's voice is important in your life. Because, because God can still use that to speak to you what is relevant to you right now. I'm, what I'm saying to, what I'm sharing with you right now tonight, everything is not relevant to you. There's some things that I say that's relevant to a person where you are right now in your life. But then there's some of you that's completely at a different place. And it's not relevant, it's not applicable to you. But you've heard something else and you understand that because that's where you are and where you're functioning right now. And that's what we, have, what we have to learn. I'm not talking to a group, and you're not at a place tonight where you have to decide whether you want God in your life or not. You want Him in your life. You want to be in a relationship with God. You want to do the right thing. You want the will of God. There is, I believe, if I'm wrong, you're welcome to put up your hand, but I believe that every person that's sitting here wants the will of God for their lives. That's what I believe. I don't believe there's someone here that's, that's still deciding in their hearts whether they want to live for Satan or for God. I believe you want the will. You want to do the right thing. And because of that, because of that, you can't make a mistake. Because in Him, you live and move and have our being. The decisions that you're making are more influenced by the Spirit than you realize. Your ways right now are more directed by God than you'll ever know. Because of that. You, you still, and it's, and it's a pure heart and a pure motive. Constantly you're thinking, you know, am I really doing what God wants me to do? And I hope I'm at the right place. I'm, uh, uh, that's, what you, that's, the, that's just a pure motive. But you don't realize how the Spirit is moving with you and you with Him every step of the way. 
It is not my choices anymore. It's our choices. I don't move down to George because I want to be there. I, I move down there because we want to be there. I want to be there and God wants to be there with me. That's why I go there. It's not, I don't want to follow my own will. I don't get on a plane now to go to wherever because I want to go. Yes, I want to go, but he wants to go. He wants to, he wants to go. So we made that choice together. Because in him we live and move and have our being. And this is something that you have to understand because the whole way, you know, to, in my relationship with God, it goes down all the way to buying milk. The bottled milk that I buy in Spar is the one that we want to buy. That's it. It's not my choice or his choice or my will. It's our will. That's what we choose. That's it. I've learned how to, to be in sync with him. Every choice that I make, every car that I buy, whatever I do with him, it's our choice. I don't try to pray my will or my desires on him. I follow his will. That's what he wants to do. I drive the car that we want to drive, that he wants me to drive. That's it. It's not, I don't, I don't do anything without him, nothing. The amazing thing about that is that when we are in a storm, when I'm in a storm, we're in it together. Because we chose it. <laughs> it's not something where the enemy can come in and say, you've missed it. I want to explain this to you. The disciples got into a boat of Jesus and they started to sail. The prophetic word, tomorrow we're going to speak, tomorrow morning we're going to speak about if you get a prophetic word, what do you do with it? How do you handle it? Uh, what is your responsibility with the prophetic word? And, and so on. Um, how do you pray? How do you warfare with the word? And, and so on. We're going to, I'm going to speak on your, what is your responsibility with the word and what's God's responsibility. The disciples received the prophetic word. The prophetic word was, we're going to the other side. That was the prophetic word. They got into the boat and they encountered a storm. The first thing that people think, they think if they have a storm in their life, they think they've missed it. They think they've missed it somewhere, they made a mistake. That day, they are in that storm, not because of their disobedience, but because of their obedience. He told them to go. That's why they're in that storm. So immediately when you hit the storm, the enemy wants to say to you, it's your fault. You've missed God. It's all your responsibility. He wants, put, he wants to put all the pressure on you that, it's, that it's, it's all your fault. That day they're in that storm because of their obedience to his work. That, that's why they were there. But they didn't realize that, they, that in him they live and move and they have their being. If they realized that, that they knew that, they've handled the storm completely different. Completely different. When you know that God is part of the situation, it changes the situation. Changes it. Suddenly it's not a storm anymore because he's in it. Suddenly, suddenly the challenge becomes easy because he's in it and he's part of it. And this is something that you have to learn where you are right now because with doctrine, the enemy will constantly come to you and say, yes, you've missed God. Yes, you've sinned. Yes, you are out of the will of God. Yes, yes, you have gone in the opposite direction of where God wanted to lead you. And because of that, you have brought this upon yourself. That's what that's the enemy's way. Separate. He wants to say, remember what I said when I started. The biggest thing that the enemy can do to God or against God is to remove you from him. That's it. And we have to fight for that. If my sin, if, if my sin does not change God's attitude towards me, why does it change my attitude towards him? David, when he made a mistake, he said, God, I'm sorry. He said, yes, I failed. Immediately restored his relationship with the Lord. Immediately. Adam and Eve had, no, it was the, no, it was the snake, no, it was Adam, no, it was Eve, no, it was, no, no. They just, just go on with it, grow. Yes, Lord, I made a mistake, that's it. I want to pursue you. I'm raising my son now, and I'm trying to teach him something. I want to teach him that when he makes a mistake in life, to get up and run to God. Not run away from him. That's what I'm trying to teach him. Get up and run to God. Look for God. 
run towards Him. Because that's where reconciliation is. That's where you recover. That's what Satan is teaching us. When you, when you made a mistake, run away from God. That's our instinct, is to move away. Our instinct, where you are right now in your life, is when you make a mistake, your first instinct should be, where's God? Where's God? I need to get close to God. That's it. Reconcile. Are you with me? Amen. Okay. Amen. Who's the people that were at the meeting last night? Could you please stand? If you're at the meeting, please stand, stand, stand. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to end. Let me minister. Are you here tomorrow? Are you? You're not yet. Why not? Because uh, my husband is cycling. He's doing a race tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Sorry, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to minister to you tomorrow morning. So if you are here, then, then I would love to minister to you. Okay. I'm going to minister. There's some of you that is here tonight that is not going to be here tomorrow. And you want me to minister to you, you can just stay behind afterwards. I'll gladly minister to you. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Paul. And then we'll see you tomorrow morning. Is that it? Nine o'clock. Yes. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Amen. Amen. Bless you.